Hi, I'm John Aldridge from DIYPhotography.net. We're here at the Photography Show in Birmingham, and I'm with Paul Reynolds from Sigma to take a look at the new 70 f2.8 macro and the 105mm f1.4. So we've got the 70mm f2.8 macro and the 105 1.4. Let's go through the macro first. Why don't you give us a rundown on... Well, these two lenses were launched at CP Plus in mm -hmm. an exhibition in Japan a couple of weeks ago. The main feature of this is it's got one-to-one -one macro reproduction ratio, so um, life-size reproduction. So the new feature we've put into these lenses is focused by wire. Right. So it's electronic compatibility um, and all, as I say, electronic control with the focus system rather than manual as you get with the other lenses. Right, and that's why there isn't an Nikon version of this yet. Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is available for Canon, uh, Sony E, Sony new Sony E, and our own Sigma lens. But uh, at the moment, not uh, not Nikon for that reason. But well, potentially in the future. Maybe. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, and is this when are these available to order? We're still waiting for delivery dates and prices. Oh right. So I can't okay. Well, give that's, you any that's a simple question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Um, and we've got a focus limiter on here for. Yeah, I mean, you can use this as a portrait lens or a macro lens. Yeah. Um, it's equally good for both. So if you're using AF, then you can turn the, the focus limiter on. Yeah. And what that will do is just stop the hunting, because obviously with a, a macro lens, there's a long reach between one-to-one -one and infinity. Yeah. And it takes, I mean, because of the focus bow wire, it's a very quick process, much quicker than it used to be with the older lenses. Yeah. But even so, it's such a long reach, it does take a bit of time. Um, so you set the focus limiter and that will just stop it at certain points or you can set it either at infinity or at the, the macro end and again it just just speeds that focusing up a little bit. Brilliant, brilliant. Alright, well as we, as we don't know when this is coming out yet or how much it's going to be, we'll just move on to the 105. It's the 105mm f1.4 DG art lens. It's a brand new optical design for us. Um, it's a lovely looking lens. We've had so much interest here at the yeah, show. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Obviously, sadly, at the moment, we haven't got any to sell, but we've got this pre-production sample here. It's available in uh, Canon, Nikon, uh, Sigma and SE mount, we said. Um, I mean, it's, it's going to be great for portraits, that, that kind of work. Uh, it's with nicknamed the Bokka Master. Um, yes. It's going to be very, very sharp, really, really smooth, soft, pastel kind of out of focus areas in the background. So I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah. So, so this is, I mean, I'm, I mean, to me, my first instinct was this was primarily aimed at portraiture. Yeah. So, so when is it that the Sony versions of those are being released? They'll be coming uh, later on this year. The 35, 50 and 85 should be around in May. 20 and 24 in June. And the 14 and 135 we're hoping for July. Brilliant. So. Fantastic. And one other thing I have to ask about this, sure. and nobody likes to talk about weight, but this is substantially larger than the Nikon 105. <laughs> is there a reason for that? Or is uh, it just easier to design it? Or is there something in there that, that wouldn't fit in a smaller space? No, it's not easier to design it. Actually, it's hard oh, to design it? it. No, but um, it's the art series is about image quality, mm -hmm. and it's no compromise. It's just about image quality. So, um, yeah, there's a long answer to this if you want me to give it to you. Yeah, please but, go ahead. Um, peripheral brightness is, is an important factor, and you get peripheral brightness of larger illumination around the edges just by having a, a bigger front element. It's the only way around it. But also, that helps the smoothness of the bokeh. So often you get this kind of pear-shaped bokeh that you might see, certainly with longer lenses like 100mm, 150 200 um, that's where the bokka, if you get a round light source, it can appear like that. Yeah. Um, that's to do with vignetting. So if you go for a larger um, diameter to get better peripheral brightness, then also the bokka is smoother as well. So the round light source becomes perfectly round rather than pear shaped. So that's that's the reason. As I say, it's it's a no compromise attitude to um, to image quality, and we're fully you know we accept of course it is slightly bigger, slightly heavier than than it could have been. But if you want the ultimate image quality, that's that's the compromise. Right. Well, thank you very much. You're Paul. welcome. No problem at all. I'm John Aldrich for DIYPhotography.net. I'm here on the Sigma stand. We're going to keep walking around the show and we'll see you in the next video. If you like some more cool movies, you can check out this one and this one and you can subscribe to us down here.